hats and now t-shirts. Terry Oglesby, Owen Short, Jason Baker, the officials, and we are underway. Katie Johnson, baseline, nice kick. In their loss to Arkansas, Auburn, eight assists, 19 turnovers. That is not the kind of ratio that Bruce Pearl wants to see from his team today. Well, it's really important for Auburn to take away Texas A&M's transition and to get on the glass. Texas A&M does a good job of offensive rebounding. So all five guys for Auburn are going to have to get to the glass and help out. And a couple of changes in the starting lineup for Texas A&M, including their leading scorer, Quentin Jackson, who's usually the sixth man. He is starting today for the Aggies. This Auburn defense is long, and they're intimidating around the rim. And they do a lot of switching. Jackson got Smith in the air, missed the shot. And it's down to the Tigers. A good hustle there by Henry Coleman again. The Aggies will try to get in the passing lane, deflection steals, as you talked about on game day. A lot of their offense comes off their defense. Well, they score almost 20 points per game off turnovers. That's the, the top in the Southeastern Conference. And they average about 11 steals per game. So they go after the ball. Nice look inside, and Alan Flanagan is fouled and will head to the line. The lefty from Little Rock, Arkansas, is coming off an Achilles injury, still not 100%. But Alan Flanagan is a spectacular athlete and an improved playmaker from a couple years ago. Averaging seven points per game last year, it was double that to Jay's point of him not being back to the, the really explosive player that everybody knows that he is. With Jasper out, he actually served as the backup point guard a little bit the last couple of games. And Jasper offers a really nice contrast to Wendell Green Jr., who is a, an outstanding scorer, just a wild card out there that can go off for 25 in a game. Jasper doesn't make mistakes. He's an excellent on-ball defender. You can see him putting great pressure on the ball right now. Tough to get an offense with Jasper Gardner. Really making Marcus Williams work for uh, every inch of real estate. The three won't go down for Tyrese Radford, who hit four of them for the Aggies in their loss to LSU on Tuesday. Well, even though Texas A&M, Eric Kapp wasn't able to corral that ball, you can see they, they just fly to the offensive glass from the perimeter. They'll send four guys at times, and you just have to find them and get a body on them. But when they get a run-up, they're difficult. Here's that one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Auburn wants to attack this to score. Atlanta getting a good look. Jackson with the ball, grad student from L.A., a couple of years of the College of Central Florida, still Aggies ball, and again, Jackson and Aaron Cash, who normally come off the bench for Buzz Williams, both starting here today. Well, Jackson, the leading scorer for this Texas A&M team, also a, a solid defender. He can't foul him. He had 20 points against LSU, but he really knocks free throws down at a high rate. Buzz Williams says morale is still good on this team. That they are still taking their coaching. They are mired in a seven-game losing streak after winning their first four league games, including a nice win over Arkansas. They started off great. They were 15 and two. Now they're 15 and nine. Yeah, they're four and zero oh in the Southeastern Conference, but they've been in all those games they lost. It's not like they're getting blown out, but they just haven't made the plays toward the end to win games. Lanigan got caught under the basket, and now the Aggies in transition. Good pass. Good recovery by Johnson in the corner. Henry Coleman, the Duke transfer, rejected by Walker Kessler. So that's a former Tar Heel blocking the shot of a former Blue Devil. And then Jabari Smith grabs the rebound, and he's able to just rip and run. Doesn't have to find an outlet. He can bring it up on his own. This is where he's really dangerous, is in that elbow isolation. That's his office right there, isn't it? Missed the 17-footer, though. I don't know if you're aware, Jay, the students are right behind us here in the arena. Isn't this a great atmosphere? <laughs> it is something. And they get louder after the steal by Smith. It's a beautiful read of the passer's eyes on that backdoor cut. Katie Johnson coming off a quiet game against Arkansas after averaging about 16 points per in his previous nine. And he's a guy who plays with a tremendous amount of effort and emotion. With Auburn 
hard switching. They're going to get caught with some bad matchups, but they just stay and play through it. Williams got back his own miss. Swatted out of bounds by Kessler. Still Aggie ball. How do you get a shot up against these guys? Like It's like throwing a frisbee through a forest. You know, it's going to hit the trees. And Kessler just goes vertical. And makes it so difficult to get a shot off. You're so worried about him. He gets in your head. So he changes way more shots than he blocks. And he blocks a ton of them. And one thing Bruce Pearl does, he gets his guys rest during games. So Kessler is already out. Dylan Cardwell. A 6'11 sophomore from Augusta, Georgia into the game, number 44 in white, as the shot clock runs down on the Aggies. Yeah, that's what's so difficult about playing against Auburn. You're, you're not thinking about scoring on out-of-bounds underneath. You're, you're thinking about getting the ball in. So they put a big guy on the ball. It was Dylan Cardwell who came in for Walker Kessler. So you can't see. And then they switch everything. You know, they're patient. They wait, the, wait for the offense to come to you. The only two points in the game on free throws until that. The first field goal of the game belongs to Alan Flanagan. A good help off that penetration by Cardwell. Coleman might have gotten away with a discard there on Smith. And then the nifty finish. Henry Coleman has been Texas A&M's most consistent player. Smith stepping into it. Boy, what a stroke for a guy 6'10". He is just a magnificent jump shooter. Soft touch off the window there for Wade Taylor, the fourth, the freshman from Lancaster, Texas. Well, he is quick and speedy. There was an extra burst there to get to the rim to get it up quickly. Smith on the drive this time, and he draws the foul. Four and a half minutes in, Auburn leading by three. Jabari Smith getting tested and already knocking down a three-pointer with that silky smooth stroke. And um, I kind of like that shot. He kind of uh, he kind of agrees with it and goes with it a little bit. Did you play any sports growing up other than basketball? Um, growing up, I played football. I played football also um, all the way to eighth grade. What position? Um, defensive end and tight end. The Tigers call you to get on the gridiron? <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm going to have to turn that one down. <laughs> 94 feet. Defensive end and tight end. Hey, how about good on you? You took the elbow pads and the knee pads off just before they turned the cameras off. Yeah, I was wearing a helmet before yeah. we started. <laughs> Could you tell I was taking a death grip on those handlebars <laughs> trying not to fall off? But what, what a great young man Jabari Smith is. And he's got tremendous humility to go along with his outstanding ability. And he's just a he's a great teammate. He doesn't he's not demanding of the ball all the time. He probably needs to be a little bit more aggressive in that and Auburn going with a little two three zone out of the sideline out of bounds Indisputably the best pair of bigs in the nation in Smith and Kessler I I don't know about indisputably, you know, Duke's got Paolo Bancaro and Mark Williams, yeah. but uh, they're Those guys are two freaks and I mean that in, a, in the best positive way and then you bring Wendell Green Jr. off the bench, who is, he shoots from every logo. I mean, he turns it over there, but he's averaged 20 points a game over his last three. Jackson on the drive, and he is fouled. Let's bring in Dre. Well, Jay, you talked about Jabari being more aggressive and needing to be more aggressive at times. And he told me when he was a high school junior, he played in open runs in Atlanta with NBA players like Iman Shumpert and Lou Williams. They treated Jabari like he was one of them. And even back then, they all encouraged him to look for his shot and be aggressive. But he is going to be one of them before long. Everybody thinks he's a top three pick. And the more and more you hear people talking about him as maybe the first overall pick. Yeah, he's worthy of that. And Dre is right. I mean, you know, his teammates want him to shoot the ball more because when he's aggressive, it opens up things for his teammates. And he's a willing passer as well. And, and he's really an excellent defender. He's an uh, a outstanding defensive rebounder. You know, he can block shots. He can play out on the perimeter. He's really got everything you want. Wendell Green Jr. in off the bench for Auburn. That's him with the ball right now. 13 points per game. Lob up top. Smith to Cardwell for the flush. And to Andrea's point, you know, it's Jabari Smith giving up the ball, not just that end shot, but he gave it up early and the ball was moving. That makes Auburn that much harder to guard in the half court. Green rejected by Cash and out of bounds back to the Aggies. 
Jabari Smith gets the ball into the middle. Great pass. One dribble. And then he's got Dylan Cardwell at the rim. Just gets Aaron Cash to come up a little bit. Tyrese Radford, nothing he could do. That's just really good offense. The ball moves, players move, and it gives the defense a chance to make a mistake. Now full court pressure here for Auburn. Now they're playing both Zep Jasper and Wendell Green at the same time. Makes them a little bit small in the backcourt, but Texas A&M, not a big team. And Smith has gone to the bench, so no Smith, no Kessler, but there is good depth on this Auburn squad. Gordon steps in, left hand, won't go. Cardwell the rebound. A&M, in addition to starting the lead 4-0, they've got a win over Notre Dame, but as we talked about, they have lost seven in a row, coming off an eight-point loss to LSU, where, get this, they scored 16 points in the first half and 52 in the second half, but lost 76-68. to What's the one key for them to hang in this game today with the Tigers? Well, they've got to do a great job on the defensive glass. Thus far, Texas A&M has... For the most part limited Auburn to one shot. This is not a good defensive rebounding team. What a great play by Tyrese Radford the transfer from Virginia Tech. He, you have to play him as a driver because he can get downhill and he is one tough hombre out there can make really make plays in the lane. As good a rebounding guard as there is in the nation really recruited by Buzz Williams to go to Blacksburg had a redshirt year under Buzz in Virginia Tech and now three years later playing for Buzz again with the Aggies. Jasper trying to get a piece of the paint. 15-footer won't go, and it's over the back on Cardwell. Radford just with that little back dribble, and he just muscled Wendell Green. He had a size and toughness advantage and got all the way to the rim and finished with that left hand. He is a lefty, but as you pointed out, an excellent offensive rebounder. He's always coming in from the perimeter. It's so tough to lay a body on him when he's got a run up. Kessler back in after the second foul on Cardwell. Auburn 22 and 2 on the season. The only two losses have come in overtime. We mentioned the overtime loss at Arkansas Tuesday. Back in November, they lost in double overtime to UConn down in the Bahamas. Everything else is a W for the Tigers this year. Gordon stepping into a three, can't hit it. Boy, the open ones have to go down for the Aggies, you would think, for them to have a chance as Kessler gets called for the foul, his first. Yeah, that's a tough call, both guys going after the ball. They give credit to Kessler, almost got that rebound over the top. Uh, just maybe a little, little arm on him. Doesn't look like the 11 a.m. local start has sapped Bruce Pearl's energy at all. But when's the last time you saw Bruce Pearl anything but energetic? Yeah, he could sweat in a freezer. <laughs> Gordon again, a good look. Nice offensive rebound. Kessler, another block. And there was a foul on the floor. But that already is the fifth block of the game for Walker Kessler. We're less than eight minutes in. And his timing is so good, he just takes it out of the air. Henry Coleman going over Jalen Williams. He's just standing right back there, erasing every offering. Williams gets the foul. Just going over the top shoulder. But that gets in your head as an offensive player. And you start thinking about where is Kessler. And there he got a deflection off the inbound. You can't get the ball inbounds. Jasper. And rejected at the other end by Manny Obasiki, the freshman from Allen, Texas. Guy with a lot of upside, tremendous athleticism. And singled up by Buzz Williams is really the only guy who played well in the first half on Tuesday. Nice cut by Coleman, but he can't finish it. And Kessler bothered that shot. That's a shot change because of his presence there. Ball was deflected, no over and back. And that's where those traps are difficult because Wendell Green Jr. is small. He can't see out of it. So he had to throw the ball essentially up for grabs. And both teams really having trouble putting the ball in the basket right now. Look at Taylor with game-changing speed. And a block from behind for Jalen Williams to take us to a timeout. With 11-13 to go, first half Auburn by three.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. Get the extra rim. And now he makes it difficult just to get the ball in with his 7-7 wingspan. A guy who almost came to Auburn out of high school, eventually went to Chapel Hill for a year, transferred, and now he just might wind up as the National Defensive Player of the Year, the way that things are going this season. Boy, how about that rebound by Jabari Smith? Two hands going up over everybody. That combo of Smith and Kessler is pretty impressive on the defensive glass. Mismatch here with the Gordon on Smith. Cross-court look takes Flanagan out of bounds. Jabari Smith is not a great offensive rebounder, but is a defensive rebounder. I mean, that's a big-time snatch there to go get it. And he plays hard on the defensive end. He's not just a one-way player. He plays on both ends. A little more noise from the students here inside Auburn Arena right now trying to get this team fired up off the glass. No good for Radford. And that's the reason why Brian Harson just walked into the gym. The football coach here uh, for the Tigers. He's getting them fired up. A lot of conversation the last few days about whether or not he had coached his final game here in Auburn. But got the vote of confidence from the administration and he'll be back. Still with this one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Auburn needs to break this to score. They turned the ball over just way too many times. It's sort of the careless turnovers on the part of Auburn. Williams for three. Deep one won't go, and the rebound run down by Obasiki. A lot of offensive rebounding for the Aggies in the early going as well. They've got nine offensive rebounds ten minutes into the game. Tough floater from the baseline drops for Taylor, and the Aggies within one. And give, give credit to Javante Brown for keeping that ball alive. What a great catch. That's a great catch and finish by Walker Kessler. A lot of big guys would travel if you throw him the ball in that situation, but not Kessler. The assist to Katie Johnson. Taylor again into the paint, had to alter it. Again, the presence of Kessler. Well, it's got to be on the mind of every guard for Texas a and MJ every time they try to get into the paint. Oh, they're hearing footsteps. You can bet on that. Radford, a really tough defender. Undersized, though. Smith gets it off. Look. And a foul on the floor going against a &M. Just couldn't block him out. Kessler can just go over the top of it. He goes up vertically. He doesn't go, he doesn't go over your back. He goes over you. And this is a, a great catch and finish. That is not an easy pass for a big guy to catch. And he made it look easy. That's a charge waiting to happen for a lot of big guys. But a great job by Kessler. Auburn by three. Subs on both sides. The Aggies have actually, they're 5-0 and oh in this building. Two of them since Bruce Pearl got here. Johnson gets free. And it's six foot flat. He rises and finishes. Anytime Kessler's in the corner, they're going to go fade screen opposite. And off that fade screen by Kate, KD Johnson, he just slipped it to the basket. Williams knows, swatted out of bounds, Aggies ball. Watch KD Johnson here, number zero. He's going to come up, set a screen, but he doesn't set it. He just slips to the basket. They're worried about the cutter instead of the screener. Just a big time play. And the tell was Walker Kessler in the corner. You put your big guy in the corner, that's going to open up the floor. And the middle of the floor wide open for that slip. Some of the Tiger football players loving it. Johnson plays basketball with a football player's mentality, doesn't he? Yeah, he he's just a, an attack guard. Loves to get downhill. Now he's guarding Javante Brown, just sitting on him and fronting him. Williams misses the three, and the Aggies now 0 for 6 from beyond the arc. Long shots, long rebounds, and Texas A&M has been quicker to those long rebounds early. Radford. Another long rebound goes to A&M. And another missed three. They're 0 for 8 out there now. Texas A&M just can't get any rhythm, in large part because of Kessler. Flanagan buries one. Auburn's 
switching all these screens and exchanges. That'll give you some odd matchups, but they just fight through those matchup problems. Good D by Johnson on Radford. Shot clocks at two. Rebound Smith. Boy, physical defense by KD Johnson there on Texas A&M and Tyree Bradford. Smith looking inside. Kessler just kicked out of bounds. One form or another, and good on Bruce Pearl. He's been down to the, uh, uh, the foundation gala that Big Vital is so involved with down in Sarasota, and he has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars here uh, in the Auburn area as well. Texas A&M, Dan, these numbers are crazy. They're 4 of 28 from the field, and yet they're still in the game because they've got 12 offensive rebounds. We talked about those long rebounds and some of the block shots. Walker Kessler's got seven blocks, and some of those have been corralled by Texas A&M and count as offensive rebounds. Flanagan with a shot clock running down, and misses the three, and Coleman down with another rebound. Henry Coleman... Is that number 10 already? 10, 10, 10 rebounds for Coleman in this game. Six of them on the offensive end. Wow. Coming off a double-double, 12 and 12 against LSU. But you can add a turnover to his ledger on that pass. Well, KD Johnson was right on him. Another matchup difficulty, you could call it. But Johnson just got up underneath him. Made it difficult for him to put the ball on the floor and wound up throwing it away. You know, Auburn's not afraid to be stuck with a bad switch. They just play right through it. It's really impressive. The one thing you know about Auburn, they're going to guard you. you know, their defense, I mean, they lead the nation in playing hard. Mm -hmm. And they do it on the defensive end. Now, their offense has not been stellar in this game thus far. But this team is a legit contender. They are the top-ranked team in the nation. The Tuesday loss at Arkansas certainly puts that in jeopardy. When the new poll comes out on Monday. Over the top, what a feed! From Green to Devin Cambridge, and the lead is 10. Set play, emptied out the backside, and Cambridge just went right around Walker Kessler in the middle of the floor, and they threw it up to him. So many lob threats. Watch as he gets his little dribble handoff. There's nobody on the backside. Cash doesn't step in to bump the cutter, and that's about as e Hayden Hefner gets picked off. That's as easy as it can be. Just a beautifully run set play by Bruce Pearl. There's so many lob threats on this Auburn team. With a lot of contact on cuts. You got to run through them hard because you have to run through a body. A Sandiara baseline with a reverse, but it won't stay down. And the Aggies now four for 29 from the field. And Kessler changed that one too. We need a stat on shot changes. It would be a large number, even bigger than the number of blocks he's got today. As Diara's called for the foul. Well, we're just beginning a great day of college basketball action. A Florida State is in Chapel Hill to take on the Heels. The Tar Heels got a win Tuesday at Clemson after their loss last weekend to Duke. And then after that, Florida, Kentucky. The Wildcats game back of Auburn to top the SEC standings. Ohio State, Michigan, and then later tonight, UCLA and USC. A little bit of something for everybody. And Kentucky's really coming on. Now that they're healthy, they've had some injury issues game to game. But it's an older team, and Kentucky's really good. And the lead grows, and it's an 11-0 run now for the Tigers. Where you try to ice or down that side ball screen action, and Green just gets into the lane. Cardwell forces a turnover. Johnson, Cambridge, and he's fouled. Johnson is like a runaway truck. He's almost like a running back. Yeah, he's a fullback. That's going right. through the line. Yep. He gets downhill, and it's just so hard to stop him. And you have to have some guts to put your body in front of him and try to take a charge. He didn't have his best game against Arkansas. Only had two points, went one of seven. But he was averaging 18 over his prior eight games. And that game he had against UConn, you know, it's a double overtime loss in the Bahamas. He put 27 points up against UConn. He was unstoppable. A transfer from Georgia, fourth in the conference in steals. 
I mean, look, look what it's taken to beat Auburn this year. They're 22 and two. They're two losses, double overtime to UConn, and then an overtime loss where they had a legit shot to win it in regulation at Arkansas in one of the most difficult environments you're going to find in college basketball. Seasons as well. All four of those programs find themselves up in the top 20 to 25 on Ken Palm and you know Tennessee the computers love Tennessee Rick Barnes's team looking at maybe a three or four seed depending on how things go the next few weeks another offensive rebound Javante Brown getting in there and getting the easy stick back that's just 11 points in 15 minutes for Texas A&M and my math skills tell me that is less than a point per minute in this game <laughs> he ain't the best in the business for nothing folks First points in five minutes and 19 seconds for A&M. Johnson almost got, uh, almost turned it over, got it back. And it's out of bounds, still to the Tigers with eight on the shot clock. That's one where Johnson needed to reverse the ball and get it to the other side of the floor. You know, the one thing that Auburn can't allow is for themselves to get trapped because their guards are a little bit smaller. Seeing out of those double teams is difficult. And again, a breather right here for Smith and Kessler, both on the bench. Shot clock at three. And they don't get it off in time. Well, Wendell Green Jr. played high school basketball with Jaden Ivey. How about that back? Wow. A little quickness and explosiveness. Jaden Ivey of Purdue is having a great year. Yeah. I mean, they got blasted the other night by Michigan, but they're legit. Yeah, he'll be shaking hands with Jabari Smith in the uh, in the green room in a couple of months. Wade Taylor misses the three, and the Aggies still haven't made one. Look out! Well, that was a courage test. Well, they want to stand in the way of that. <laughs> That got Jabari Smith up on his feet. What a finish there by Devin Cambridge. Jeez, that was a foul. Two hands on the ball handler. This thing is a rough and tumble ball game. Great feed by Green. No basket. Foul before the shot. So let's go to break, Jay, giving Devin Cambridge his due again. Heart stopping. <laughs> Devin Cambridge right down the middle of the court. Talk about a rim run. Who wants to take it? Want to take a charge on that? Get out of the way. Big time finish. And Jabari Smith loving it. Feels like Auburn should be up by more than 14. You know, they've done a great job defensively in their first shot defense, but haven't cleaned up the, the offensive glass. 13 offensive rebounds so far for Texas A&M. You know, a lot of those have been long rebounds because Texas A&M 0 of 10 from three. There's another crazy number for A&M. No assists and eight turnovers. 16 and a half minutes into a game. Cambridge. Cardwell. And one. Well, give Dylan Cardwell a lot of credit. 6'11", a sophomore from Augusta, Georgia. He's fourth in the Southeastern Conference in blocks. He shoots 70% from the field. And when Walker Kessler was in foul trouble, nobody boxes him out here. You know, just way too late having a guard. Quentin Jackson have to come over and try to box him out. Way too late. But in Tuscaloosa, after Walker Kessler got in foul trouble against the Crimson Tide. He came into the ball game. Cardwell did at six points, six rebounds, four blocks. He was a huge factor in Auburn winning that game. Yeah, look, to your point, look at guys like Cardwell and Cambridge. How many really good programs around the country might have one or even both of these guys starting for them? Oh, no question. And they'd be good teams. Yeah. But you're bringing these guys off the bench and both of them athletic. They can play above the rim. Yeah, that's why this team is so complimentary of one another. And you could take a lesson from that, by the way. <laughs> you may have known. I, I may have noticed I'm not great at listening to your lesson. Here, so. <laughs> I hear you, but... And a block. Again, KD Johnson, when in doubt, he's going to the rim, and he's going to the rim hard. hard. Yeah, that's a great point. He just barrels down the lane. And Javante Brown, good call by the official, which 
nine times out of ten they call those charges and they're all blocked. Bruce Pearl had Johnson absolutely in stitches yesterday. Doesn't matter what it was, but he was simulating a five count by an official. And, you know, Bruce can tell a story, right? Bruce can get people laughing. And he had Johnson just howling yesterday uh, at practice. A lot of transfers from a lot of different places. And hey, being 22 and 2 makes things fun, but these guys have fun. And the joke he told was really funny, but beforehand he says, Can I tell a joke? <laughs> and his son Steven, who's an outstanding assistant coach, had the scout for this game, and the scout was impeccable. As soon as Bruce said, Can I tell a joke? Steven said, No. <laughs> I'll tell you, Manny Obasaki and Katie Johnson, I mean, getting after each other, and eventually the call goes against Walker Kessler, I believe. That was not called. That was called on Kessler. Yeah, and that was a mess of a, a possession. The, the officials missed a walk. Then they missed an offensive foul. And when that happens, that hangs a foul on somebody that shouldn't have had it, like Walker Kessler. And it's just a poorly officiated possession for which nothing will happen. Crowd just saw a replay. Obasaki at the line. We saw Texas A&M out in Vegas in the Maui Invitational in November. We talked a little bit about him here. I mean, he's raw, he's learning, he's a freshman, but I mean, the, the upside and the tools that Obasaki has are pretty obvious. He looks like he's really going to develop into a nice player. Really athletic. You know, the lefty was a top 100 recruit. He's working on his shot, and early in the season, the game was maybe a little too fast for him. But he's a worker that really studies the game, and, and I agree with you. I think he's going to be very good. Buzz Williams tried to build both with recruiting high school players and within the transfer portal. A lot of transfers on the Aggies as well. Great post feed. Kessler can't finish it. Gordon. Shovel pass. Coleman. Another altered shot by Kessler. And Jabari Smith was there early covering up the rim. Smith's open beyond the arc, and the pass whistles through his fingertips. Well, he was he was looking to pass the ball into the corner. KD Johnson just took his eye off it just a bit and knew it. I mean, he was thinking about the next pass rather than the catch. But give him credit because he was thinking about the right pass to make, which was to Johnson in the left corner. Well, good thing you got a piece of it, or one of us would have had to make a play on that ball, and that wouldn't have ended well. Well, you could, you could do it. You've got great hands. <laughs> I, except when the check comes. That's true. Will A&M knock down a three here in the first half? 0 for 10. And a lot of them have been fairly open looks. Well, they've been sped up a little bit. Coleman over Smith. And it's out of bounds to AM. Boy, it's amazing the kind of condition these players are in to play this hard defensively. Auburn plays their tails off on every possession. Case in point, Jasper right now. You know, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but they play so hard they can deal with mistakes. It'll be Auburn ball. Boy, the, the Aggies just cannot get the ball to go in the basket right now. They are shooting 16%. And that'll make a guy like Buzz Williams break out in a sweat. But then again, Buzz Williams always breaks out in a sweat during the game. I'm still laughing from the Maui Invitational when we did that event. And we did kind of a 94 feet with the eight coaches and I asked the coaches if you could eat only one thing for the rest of your life What would it be and Buzz Williams said eggs? <laughs> <laughs> nice runs at Marquette and Virginia Tech before going down to A&M. He's a Texas guy Hardwell at the line A little Don Nelson hitting the heel almost yeah. went in. And I missed them both. 
And who's going to get caught? It'll be Smith who got called. He's first. Jabari's saying, hey, who's grabbing my arm? I'll tell you, Henry Coleman's only one for eight, two points, but he's got 11 rebounds. He's not making shots, but he is playing hard and doing a lot of other things well right now for the Aggies. He's so strong and physical and is always working in the glass. Runs the floor, plays a, the top of that 1-2-2 two, two at times. Richmond of Virginia, Buzz Williams tried to get him when he was at uh, Virginia Tech. Now has him at A&M after Coleman spent a year at Duke. He had 15 rebounds earlier this year against South Carolina. He's on pace to best that one. And they don't have much size. He's incredibly important to them. Boy, this feels like it should be way more than a 13-point lead. Sticking with the zone. Johnson. A strong baseline drive and a finish and yelling for a foul as well. Uh, Andre Gordon went flying, hit the deck. Boy, everybody knows Johnson wants to drive and he still gets it done most of the time. Had an arm bar on him the whole way. That's going to go down for Ethan Henderson as they play on. Henderson, a 6'8 senior, a transfer from Arkansas. <laughs> Trying to get Smith free. Long rebound out of bounds to AM. Auburn's got to send some cutters through the middle of that defense, try to soften it up a little bit. They just threw it around the perimeter, wound up settling for a jump shot. If Texas A&M could get a score here, get it down to 11 or 10, they have to feel pretty good given how this first half went offensively. This game should not be this close based upon how Texas A&M was able to score in the first half. Radford into the chest of Cardwell, and Cardwell wins it. Plenty of time. Johnson lays it in. Buzz has got to stay hydrated. These are two coaches who get up and down the sideline, that's for sure. 15-point lead, Auburn underway here in the second half. Started out with a lob look for Flanagan, well defended. Smith, no, but fouled on the jump shot by Quentin Jackson. Well, you really have to make Jabari Smith drive it because he wants to get into that silky smooth jump shot of his where he is such an effective jump shooter. But you really have to get up on him, make him drive the ball. You make shooters drive and drivers shoot. It is that simple. I think one of the interesting stats, and there are so many about Smith this year, there have been four games this year where he has not scored in double figures. And in each instance, he has come back the very next game and put at least 20 up on the board. I thought his best game of the year was probably against Oklahoma. He made 23 points, 12 rebounds, and he was excellent against Arkansas. He had nine rebounds in that one, 20 points, made some big threes down the stretch in a ridiculously difficult environment in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Yeah, one of the best environments I think that we've seen in college basketball this year. Well, Jabari Smith said he couldn't hear Bruce Pearl, but he could see his lips moving, <laughs> but couldn't hear a word <laughs> in the huddle. <laughs> Every player's dream. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Just nod at the appropriate time. <laughs> Jackson at 6'5", again guarding Smith at 6'10". Jasper to a wide open Flanagan. And Aaron Cash down with the rebound. The question for Texas A&M is, where will their offense come from? Williams to Cash, and Kessler with another one. Johnson. Good luck stopping that. That is Auburn in a nutshell right there. Kessler with the defensive end, and then a transition drive for a bucket at the other end.
Kessler turns a layup for the opponent into a layup for his team. And there's another one. We do have a foul call. Is it Kessler? Yeah. Yes, it is. Stays away from the body of the offensive player. Got it again with the left hand. That gave the run off. Katie Johnson just looks at Jasper and then takes it all the way to the rim and finishes. Says he got fouled. Kessler has picked up a couple of fouls in this game that I'm a little surprised. You know, in the last ball game, he got a couple of fouls where he was up vertical and there was contact created by the offensive player and they wound up calling it on him. And with him picking up his third, he's coming out early in the second half. You and I have a great vantage point here. He said, I didn't do anything on that last one. You and I have a great vantage point of him kind of sizing up the defender, tracking his progress. And getting ready, timing, you know, getting ready to have the timing to block it with the left hand. Well, he doesn't have to get in front of the offensive player. So it's not like he has to put himself at risk of picking up a charge. He can get it out of the air and get it from behind the offensive player, from the driver. And how about this? You take out the leading shot blocker in the SEC and put in the fourth leading shot blocker to replace him. That's pretty good. Who would probably be second if he got more minutes, but Kessler gets most of the minutes. Johnson follows up his miss and his foul. Boy, he is a freight train. He just never stops moving. He's just an attack guard. He's in attack mode on both ends of the floor for every minute he's on the floor. Missed over Radford, missed wide right, and somehow it goes in. Looks like Alan Flanagan got a hand on that. They tried to post Flanagan as the inbounder off a little screen. That's where you got to put your hand up on your way back down on D, right, to let everybody know you tipped that ball in. Three points, man. And then they do give it to Flanagan. 18-point lead now for the Tigers. Johnson, what a pass. Cardwell to finish. Well, just a middle drive. You can't allow middle. That breaks the defense down. You have to help up, and it's an easy layup. Great job getting a piece of the paint by KD Johnson. He is having some kind of game. Cardwell knocks it away, but Cash runs it down. Cardwell really moves his feet well. Radford around and out. The Aggies are shooting 17%. They are 7 for 42. Good pass. Johnson from the corner. Out of bounds to AM. And AM didn't get that to go. Excuse me. Auburn didn't get that to go down. Here's the last possession. Drawing two defenders and just dumping it off to Cardwell, who knew what to do with it. That's a great finish. But that last possession wound up going out of bounds off the rebound. But just a great extra pass. And maybe we shouldn't say extra pass. It should be the right pass to the wide open shooter in the corner. 11 assists on 15 made field goals for the Tigers. Nice little change of pace by Taylor, but he can't finish it. Well, Cardwell was there to bother him. That's another shot change. Jasper fouled by Taylor. It's amazing how few of those fouls have been called in this game. I mean, that's a foul, but one out of ten have been called. Boy, and you love this three-guard rotation, if you will, as Jasper now goes to the bench, and Wendell Green, the transfer from Eastern Kentucky, comes in between Johnson, Jasper, and Green. Bruce Pearl's always got two really good guards out there. Well, Bruce Pearl was telling me last time I was here for the Alabama game that he saw Wendell Green Jr. play in high school. He was scouting another player and thought he's the best player on the floor and complimented him to his coach. You know, they didn't really recruit him. He wound up going to Eastern Kentucky, and when he came up in the transfer portal, his son Steven said, hey, remember that kid you really liked when you saw him? And, uh, and he said, who? What are you talking about? And he, he reminded them of Wendell Green Jr. And they said, well, let's get him because that guy's a jet. Was player of the week of the SEC last week as Alan Flanagan steps to the line. And Green, his last three games, is averaging 20 points and just under six assists per game. And with Jasper back in the lineup, he's playing fewer minutes 
and he's more effective in those minutes. He comes in off the bench, and he completely changes the game with his speed. It is clear that Auburn is in that inner circle of teams that can cut down the net. Yes. The national championship. What do they have to guard against in order to not fall out of that group, to not get tripped up by a weaker team in the tournament, that sort of thing? Well, anybody can get tripped up in the tournament, but I think for Auburn, it's going to be continuing to improve in their half-court offense because I think they're a, an excellent defensive team. Not good. They are excellent. And we've talked about how, they, how hard they play. Their defense shows up every game. And they've proven to be a very difficult team to beat. I mean, their only losses have been in overtime to Arkansas and UConn. But I think if they can really improve their half-court execution, you know, you're looking at one of eight teams that's in the upper tier to win this whole thing. Yeah, and out of this league, Kentucky, yeah. you know, the Southeastern Conference, I think, is the best league in the country. They've got some, certainly some competition with the Big 12, maybe the Big 10. But this team is legit. But the, I'm, I'm starting to think, you know, you, the more you watch Gonzaga, they're the best offensive team in the country. And that's it's not even an argument. I mean, they are mauling people uh, in their own league, winning by 30, 40 points. They've got St. Mary's tonight. And if they win that game, you got to believe they likely go to number one. Auburn losing at Arkansas earlier this week probably will knock them out of the top spot. Up to 20, the lead now for Auburn. Four minutes and change into the second half. Summit, and he really admires Pat and everything she gave to the game. Dre, thank you. And of course, Dre, a former Lady Ball herself. So, uh, uh, recruited by Pat Summit. I believe, Dre, you said you were part of, of Coach Summit's last class, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, uh, you know very well the admiration that both of these coaches have for your former coach. One of the great coaches of all time in any sport. Cardwell takes a bump and will head to the line. They're going four flat on out of bounds underneath. That was just a simple little cross screen by Alan Flanagan on Dylan Cardwell just to get him open right in front of the rim. You know, if Auburn's guarding that, they've got a big guy on the ball. You're not going to be able to see that because it's going to be covered up by size. And that's already the sixth team foul on the Aggies here in four minutes and 17 seconds of the second half. We didn't think things could get any worse for Texas A&M. Shot just under 18% in the first half, 0 of 4 to start the second. Already having lost seven in a row after a 4 0 start in league play. They're 15 and 9 on the season overall. The most impressive thing, Dan, I think you mentioned in the first half, talking to Buzz Williams, and I talked to Dale Lair for quite a while before the game, one of his assistants, that, you know, this team hadn't quit. You know, they could easily fold it up. Yeah. And, and they keep playing, and their attitudes have been great. We mentioned they scored only 16 in the first half against LSU Tuesday, scored 52 in the second half, but still lost by eight. They've obviously got their hands full here in hostile territory against one of the best teams in the country. The only shame of it is that there won't be another regular season game between Auburn and Kentucky. Right, Auburn won here 80 to 71. That was the game where Ty Ty Washington got hurt. Kentucky led early. Wouldn't shock anybody, of course, if they met at the SEC championship game and then maybe deep into the NCAA tournament as well. You never know. Well, Kentucky is really starting to come on with an older team, all the transfers, and then. You know, the combination of Shibwe and Ty Ty Washington, Xavier Wheeler. It's a really good team. It's getting a lot better. Green looks the defender off and then couldn't lay it in. And a missed three by Andre Gordon as AM still hasn't hit one from beyond the arc. Two Aggie players were wrestling each other for the ball. Neither one knew the other guy was his teammate. Well, Javari Smith had that rebound, got pushed in the back, and just ignored by the officials. I mean, Javante Brown just pushed him right in the back and pushed him out of the play. And this has been a really physical game. I mean, watch Javari Smith here. I mean, that, yeah, he gets pushed right in the back there. And that's a foul on any, any level of the game. Four starters just checked back in for Auburn. 
Spin by Radford, knocked away by Green, out of bounds to the Aggies. It's so hard to knock that ball away without catching the arm. And my guess is he did catch the arm. And as if Jasper gets called for the foul on in the inbounds. Jasper, you, you can do an Auburn game and not say his name all that many times. Transfer from Charleston. They don't need him for a lot of scoring. I think Kessler might have been over the end line, so they're going to take away that steal. I don't know how Wade Taylor sees anything with Kessler. He can't. <laughs> Block number nine for Kessler. You know, Auburn, it, Bruce Pearl's always done that. Always put a big guy on the ball out of bounds. Everybody switches everything. So getting the ball in bounds is brutal. Five guys for five seconds playing their tails off. But the key is the big guy guarding the inbounder. Radford and is fouled by Green. The best you can do here is ball fake one way. Yeah, they got it. He, he stepped out of bounds once he had made the and then the block with the left hand. How many block, shots he blocked with his left hand? I, I, don't you think it's possible all nine today? It could be. Yeah. Feels like it. But he just goes straight up every time. I mean, he's a guy who's got two points in the game, and you can make a case he's been the most important player in the game. No question. I mean, he's been the dominant force in the game with his rim protection. You know, he, he's shooting more threes now than he did against North Carolina, and it's great when he makes one, but his money's going to be made with his shot blocking and his rebounding. His career high in blocks is 11. Did that a couple of weeks ago against LSU. He's already got nine in this one. Jalen Williams, who was a starter last year for the Tigers. Great look. Kessler, spin. And the finish. He's got it all. Footwork, hands. Great teammate. And that shot blocking thing's pretty good, too. <laughs> His dad played at Georgia. His late uncle, the second all-time leading scorer at Georgia. Boy, some credit there to Tyrese Radford to get him on over the outstretched arm of Kessler. To execute it and the guts to take it in there. He may be 6'2", but he plays a lot bigger than that. Good pass. The recovery by Williams. Kessler again. How many times have we seen a guard on Kessler down on the block? And really good patience by Cambridge. Diarano. And now it's been one and out for Texas A&M. Not corralling some of those rebounds like they did in the first half. Stop and go off the glass. Too strong. Kessler again. And all of a sudden, he's got eight. He's like a vacuum cleaner. Tipping it in, tipping it out. Good back cut by Diara. 20 point game. Green got his dribble back. Up top to Cambridge. His second highlight reel dunk of the afternoon. And Henry Coleman with a slam to the other end for the Yankees. Yeah, anytime Auburn drives, you're going to see somebody come in from the corner and be a lob threat. And they've got so many guys that can go up, up over the top of you. What a pass. And a great cut. Another finish for Cambridge. Auburn sharing the ball beautifully today. And another great cut out of the corner. This time from the right corner. 
There's the first made three of the game for AM, and it belongs to Quentin Jackson. Quentin Jackson was really struggling coming into this game. Last eight games coming in, he was seven of his last 38. Aggies now one for 14 on threes. In and out of the other end for Williams. AM's going to have to push the ball and try to beat this Auburn defense down the floor. Playing five on five in the half court has been rough. What a rebound. They're just so much bigger at just about every spot. Jasper. And Williams foul with Kessler to take us to a timeout. We've talked about Walker Kessler's defense, Jay. How about what he's now doing at the offensive end? Well, he's been a handful in. Just hoping to get in. Uh, Alabama, I think, would, even though they've had a crazy up and down season, huge wins and then some puzzling losses. And LSU looks like they are putting together a solid resume, although they've had their ups and downs as well. And then you've got teams like Florida, Mississippi State, hoping to get hot when it matters the most. Kessler feeling it. Boy, that was a great post move. Just a little step into the middle and a drop step to the basket over Javante Brown. Great poise in the post by Walker Kessler. An outstanding alliteration by you. A lot of alliteration from anxious <laughs> anchors placed in powerful posts. Walker Kessler has one triple-double this year. He's got a chance at another. He's there in points. He needs one more block and four more rebounds for a triple-double today. Just go on Moses Malone and miss, miss four shots, get your own rebound. Look at how aggressive he is all of a sudden. And now he's getting so much attention inside, freeing up things for guys outside. Jalen Williams is having a really good game. Excellent minutes at 13 points against Georgia. Another change shot by Kessler. Past the midway point of the second half, Auburn in command, leading by 25. And it's, it's been all defense. You know, Auburn has not played well offensively, but their defense has been magnificent. And don't you love just how the pieces all fit together? Yeah. I think you could say that about Auburn. I think you can say it about Kentucky as well, that the pieces really complement each other. Now Devin Campbell's just getting greedy with the Ducks. <laughs> Williams off balance. Williams got it back. Good pass. Cambridge for three. And did Kessler just pick up number four? I don't think it was Kessler. I thought Williams got it. Got it. Okay. But Kessler, that's a great drop step move. Just took that little move into the middle. And then Williams just catching to shoot, not catching and get ready to shoot. He caught it to shoot, make the defense take it away from you. Williams was a high school wide receiver. How do you like to guard that? And Jabari Smith, what did he tell you? He was defensive end and, uh, and tight end. But he said he was only 6'3 when he played football. So can you imagine having to be that small? <laughs> Smith, a quiet game. Not foul trouble. He's only got one. He's played 18 minutes, one for six with five points. But guys like Williams and Cambridge are playing so well, and they're up by so much, they're getting a lot of minutes right now. Yeah, they don't need his scoring in this one, but he's really done a great job defensively. A little 2-3 zone out of the out-of-bounds situation. Tough turnaround will go for Manny Obasiki. And right now, Auburn, obviously with this big lead, doesn't have to be in any hurry. They don't want to take the air out of the ball. But you don't have to be in a rush. There's that flex action and then a duck in by Williams. Inside 10 to shoot. Jasper on the drive. Flanagan and partially blocked by Ethan Henderson. And it's an easy run out and flush for Obasiki. Yeah. 
There's the extra pass, but it was behind Flanagan, who was cutting to the basket. Auburn by 21, 7.37 to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. Get the expert tax help you need. Just hoping to get in. Uh, Alabama, I think, would, even though they've had a crazy up and down season, huge wins and then some puzzling losses. And LSU looks like they are putting together a solid resume, although they've had their ups and downs as well. And then you've got teams like Florida, Mississippi State, hoping to get hot when it matters the most. Kessler feeling it. Boy, that was a great post move. Just a little step into the middle and a drop step to the basket over Javante Brown. Great poise in the post by Walker Kessler. An outstanding alliteration by you. A lot of alliteration from anxious <laughs> anchors placed in powerful posts. Walker Kessler has one triple-double this year. He's got a chance at another. He's there in points. He needs one more block and four more rebounds for a triple-double today. Just go on Moses Malone and miss, miss four shots, get your own rebound. Look at how aggressive he is all of a sudden. And now he's getting so much attention inside, freeing up things for guys outside. Jalen Williams is having a really good game. Excellent minutes at 13 points against Georgia. Another change shot by Kessler. Past the midway point of the second half, Auburn in command, leading by 25. And it's, it's been all defense. You know, Auburn has not played well offensively, but their defense has been magnificent. And don't you love just how the pieces all fit together? Yeah. I think you could say that about Auburn. I think you can say it about Kentucky as well, that the pieces really complement each other. Now Devin Camp is just getting greedy with the Ducks. <laughs> Williams off balance. Williams got it back. Good pass. Cambridge for three. And did Kessler just pick up number four? I don't think it was Kessler. I thought Williams got it. Got it. Okay. But Kessler, that's a great drop step move. Just took that little move into the middle. And then Williams just catching to shoot, not catching and get ready to shoot. He caught it to shoot, make the defense take it away from you. Williams was a high school wide receiver. How do you like to guard that? And Jabari Smith, what did he tell you? He was defensive end uh, uh, and tight end but he said he was only 6'3 when he played football so can you imagine having to be that small <laughs> Smith a quiet game not foul trouble he's only got one he's played 18 minutes one for six with five points but guys like Williams and Cambridge are playing so well and they're up by so much they're getting a lot of minutes right now yeah they don't need his scoring in this one but he's really done a great job defensively a little two three zone out of the out of bounds situation Tough turnaround will go for Manny Obasiki. And right now, Auburn, obviously with this big lead, doesn't have to be in any hurry. They don't want to take the air out of the ball, but you don't have to be in a rush. There's that flex action and then a duck in by Williams. Inside 10 to shoot. Jasper on the drive. Flanagan and partially blocked by Ethan Henderson. And it's an easy run out and flush for Obasiki. the extra pass but it was behind Flanagan who was cutting to the basket Auburn by 21 737 to go ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block get the expert tax help you need normal broadcaster play they call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. incidental, contact. incidental contact normal broadcaster play play on 
Jasper again a uh, a quietly important part of this Auburn machine, isn't it? He's such a good defender. Like his ball pressure is fantastic, and he's a low error guy. Like he doesn't turn the ball over. He's got almost a four to one assist turnover ratio, and, and it's such a great compliment. He's going out, and then Wendell Green Jr. comes in, a totally different player that you know is looking to score. He'll shoot it from the logo. <laughs> You know, it's not like he's a big turnover guy. You know, you'll have a few extras, but he's out there looking to make to make plays. Good pass out of the double. And Jasper, a, a transfer from Charleston, Green from Eastern Kentucky, Johnson from Georgia. All of these guys have come from somewhere else. Yeah, Jasper was all CAA defensive team and the best on-ball defender in that league, and he's got to be among the best on-ball defenders in the SEC now. Radford gets fouled. <laughs> and again, the crowd doesn't like the call. Kessler doesn't like the call, but Radford going to the line. Well, Kessler saying, hey, I went straight up. The guy comes anywhere near my arm. That's not my fault. Yeah, he, well, he got him in the head. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, he foul. Got that's yep. a foul. That's yeah. absolutely a foul. Yeah. Now one rebound away. He's got nine now, so one rebound away from the triple double. Why the long face? <laughs> well, I mean, it's pretty rare that the fouls that the officials call are wrong. It's the ones they don't call that drive you crazy. You know, these games all, all season long, college basketball has devolved into hockey. And all the work that was done for freedom of movement. I mean, it's a total waste of time. How do you fix it? You fix it if the commissioners have to start, and it's got to be on the commissioner level. They've got to get away from worrying about the darn college football playoff and how they divvy up the money and start paying attention to the product because they can't hire and fire officials. The supervisors can. So the commissioners have to start saying to the supervisors, you don't fix this, fix this, I'm firing you. And it's been a failure on the part of commissioners and supervisors, and it's a brutal failure. Walker Kessler is still in the game. We'll see if he's back in there. What do we come out of this timeout? He has been the dominant player. And I would venture a guess that everybody on the Auburn side on their bench knows that right now. That's why he's still in there. Yeah, they get the stats during the game, so they know it. He knows it, too. Sign up in the locker room that says make history Walker Kessler continuing to do that and Bruce Pearl has done that here at Auburn There's that flex action in the duck in from Jabari Smith he sets that little flex screen the cut comes from the corner along the baseline and he can, he can either duck into the Middle of the lane or pop out For an open three and again, Auburn has shared the ball beautifully today, much better than they did against Arkansas Tuesday. They've now got 18 assists on 24 made field goals, which is an outstanding percentage. Up top. Smith got it back. You can imagine being a student here and a fan of this team is a pretty fun thing to be. Hey, this has been next game. But other than that, what did he really do? Not much. Auburn really in control the entire game, even though they had some prolonged stretches where they weren't playing all that well offensively, but they're going to win it easily. Alan Flanagan has had a really nice game. You look at how balanced the scoring has been for the Tigers. Flanagan's got 14, Kessler 12, Katie Johnson 11, and Jabari Smith and Dylan Cardwell each have nine. But you always come back to the defense that Auburn makes it so difficult for you to run any half-court offense They put great pressure on the ball They're aggressive going for steals And they've got a bunch of shot blockers near the rim good pass by Jabari Smith Little shot fake and no help defense easy two for Flanagan And that's a guy who is at 70% of his athleticism due to an Achilles tear 
That's remarkable. The 2019 Final Four, number one in the country. It is cool to be an Auburn Hooper. And they made sure that Bruce Pearl's going to stick around here for a while, didn't they? Oh! <laughs> Cambridge almost had another one. Well, anytime there's penetration, if you're guarding somebody in the corner, get in his way because he's going to the rim. New York Berman into the ball game. Junior from Birmingham, Alabama, 6'4 guard. Bruce Pearl recently signing an eight-year deal that will pay him $50 million. Thank you, Louisville. <laughs> Leo Burley, you mentioned from Birmingham, Alabama. He's from Mountain Brook. Have you ever been to Mountain Brook? I have not. Where it's a it? really, really tough neighborhood where if you leave your BMW unlocked, your Gucci loafers are going to get snatched in two seconds. Said the kid from Rolling Hills. Rolling Hills is the, it's not like those rich kids from Palos Verdes. <laughs> Rolling Hills is a rough and tumble yeah. area. Wow. How about the determination there by Quentin Jackson to finish that? The senior from Los Angeles. I think he's the best defender on this Texas A&M team. Well, he took a lot of contact even before he got to the bucket and still finished the play. This will be the eighth consecutive loss for the Aggies. Their next opportunity to snap the streak will be Tuesday night at home against Florida, a game you can see on the SEC net. Well, it's just so hard when you get mired in this, you know, not making plays to win games. I and mean, this is the first game they've really been blown out of, didn't have a chance, but they've started 15 and 2. Yeah. And haven't won since. This will be 15 and 10 after this one. This is Sandiara knocks down a three. Another athletic young player from Queens, New York, just a sophomore. So the future is pretty bright for Texas A&M, especially in their backcourt. Preston Cook, Chris Moore now into the game for Auburn. Foul committed by Jalen Williams. Of the teams you've seen, do you, do you agree with that sort of tier of eight that you would call Sort of final four or title favorites. So so Auburn, Kentucky obviously in it. Gonzaga obviously in it. You got Arizona in there. Arizona, UCLA. I would put Duke in there and yeah. Purdue. That's seven right now. No argument with any of those. Uh, we will be out in Tucson next week for Arizona and Oregon. Looking forward to that one. Another team that is really fun to watch, really talented. Tommy Lloyd is first year there. They're Cats are having a heck of a season. Boy, they, they're another team that runs great offense, like watching a European pro team. What a rebound. And the finish for Williams. Williams has been really good in this game. It does appear both in terms of the best team in the country and the national player of the year wooden award winner You've got six eight ten teams six eight ten players who could Who could win those who could be the last team standing and the and the wooden award winner. That's fun and So many great big guys around the country Cook baseline can't get it to go, and it's out of bounds to the Aggies with 30 seconds left in this one. You know, the other team you would put in that group of eight would be a healthy Baylor. Yeah. You know, Baylor's 15-0 when healthy. Now, they haven't been healthy their last several games. And still getting L.J. Pryor back healthy has been an issue. And, and we were told that Jonathan Chamarchacho had a significant knee injury in the game against Texas. Hope he's going to be okay. Auburn goes to 23 and 2 and 11 and 1 in lead play with a 17.